So I just saw the flash, and oh boy, does it feel like it's 2016 again. Hello darkness, my old friend. So the movie that's supposed to be one of the best comic book movies ever made, the movie that James Gunn, Tom Cruise, Stephen King, Jaden Smith and Edgar Wright all think it's amazing, turns out to be not so amazing. In fact, it's fucking terrible, like these other two abominations. This review will contain spoilers, but it's not like it matters. Knowing what happens in this film will not take away any enjoyment you might have while watching it, mostly because there's very little to enjoy. The movie opens with a funny scene where Barry Allen, aka The Flash, is late for work and is trying to buy a sandwich. The girl who usually takes his order isn't there and the guy that replaces her does his best to make sure you understand exactly what type of humor this movie is going for. Cringe. Stuff that makes you feel you're watching a TikTok video with 10 million views and you don't quite understand what's happening. The entire city is just awful, uncomfortable to sit through and the opposite of entertainment. It shows that the director and the writers have no idea on how to create comedy or light-hearted moments. Eventually this nightmare ends and we get our first look at the visual representation of what Flash using his super speed looks like. And it looks amazing! I mean, just look at these graphics. If they ever make more PlayStation 2 games, they should try and make them look like this. This is just... Wow! So the Flash is running towards Gotham City, I think. Not sure. I know Batman was there, but he was busy following random criminals and asked Alfred to ask the Flash to save people from a hospital building that was about to collapse. And this gives birth to the baby sequence, an action set piece where we see CGI baby monstrosities plus a dog and a nurse falling down a building in slow motion and everything is seen through this ugly, distorted shade of orange. Something I'm guessing was an artistic choice by the creators of this movie which clearly shows they allow people with impaired sight to work on the film. Very progressive of them. Well done, Warner Brothers. The sequence tries to be funny, I guess, by showing the Flash eating random pieces of food while trying to save everyone from falling to their deaths. And I guess there's bound to be someone in the whole world that finds this scene entertaining. John Campia exists. The Flash. It's great. <laughs> it's really good. Oh. Wonderful humor. But for most audiences, I don't see how creepy looking computer animated babies plus the Flash doing his best to make himself look fucking disgusting while eating junk food is going to be a big hit. And also, one of the babies gets saved by being stuck in the microwave. I'm not sure how to feel about that. It was one of those moments where you're watching something incredible happen, like a car accident. Just amazing. If anything, this scene is bold, considering some of the stuff the actor playing the Flash has been accused of. Afterwards, we get back to Batman chasing down those criminals from before, and it's easy to understand why Batman works during nighttime. He looks ridiculous when exposed to the sun. The entire car chase looks goofy. Not to mention, it ends with a cameo from Wonder Woman, and it's just sad. Once she shows up, the frame is set up in a way that makes her seem like she's looking directly at the camera, like this is some breaking the fourth wall moment or something from a shitty sitcom. Bazinga. And her theme music popping up is rapidly becoming a parody of itself. Every time she shows up on screen, the music abruptly changes to <laughs> The following interaction between all three superheroes is painful. Everyone looks super uncomfortable and come off like Hollywood actors in cosplay thanks to the terrible choice of lighting. Again, the direction of this movie is just as bad as the writing, I can't stress this enough. If I was watching this film at home, this would be one of those times the 10 second skip button was made for. This scene is embarrassing. With that done, the Flash gets his sandwich and goes to work. There's nothing aggressively bad in these filler scenes, but that's just it. There are still filler scenes and watching them is mind-numbingly boring. Compare any scene from this movie where two or more normal people talk to each other with a scene from The Dark Knight or the first Iron Man and it's night and day. Those movies knew how to tell a story where characters acted like real people and human interaction worked. This movie doesn't, it's broken. Every non-superhero scene is filler that I want to skip. I don't care about Barry's problems at work. I don't know this character, the movie hasn't made me care about him. Why should I give a shit? And the interactions between Barry and his love interest, 
Let's just say I missed the first season of CW's The Flash and how that show handled its human drama. Moving on, Barry is trying to prove his father's innocence in his mother's murder, but the videotape that was supposed to show his dad in another place during the time of the crime doesn't show his face, so Barry is back at square one. This plot point is important because he comes back at the end of the movie. And by come back, I mean they make sure you understand that Barry's character development is zero. In fact, the movie takes a big dump on any development this character might have had. But more on that later. Barry reminisces about the time his family was still together. We have this cheesy, bad acted flashback that reminds me of Aquaman. Again, filler. All filler with nothing of worth. Barry starts running and enters the Speed Force, the power that gives him the ability to time travel. Again, the visuals are... Before changing things, he goes to Batman for a pep talk. Batman tells him not to fuck up the timeline. This is the lesson The Flash has a character needs to learn in this movie. He isn't supposed to change time to make his life better. But this is still the beginning, so he needs to make the mistake and learn afterwards. Otherwise, there won't be a movie. So Barry goes back in time and makes sure his mother doesn't have to ask his father to leave during the time she got murdered, and he doesn't, and she doesn't die. But before he gets back to his present time, this purple, flesh-like creature appears and knocks out Barry from the speed force. This creature is gonna show up again in the third act of the movie, in one of the worst twists I've seen on film. On par with all the bullshit going on in Star Wars The Last Jedi. They were nobody. They were filthy junk traders who sold you off for drinking money. Barry is now stuck in 2013 when he was 18 years old. Now there are two versions of Barry, since one wasn't annoying enough. You can tell them apart because the older version looks like a man in his 30s, while the younger version also looks like a man in his 30s. But this one dresses like a teenager, so it's fine. It's amazing how little care went into making sure the younger version actually looked younger. They just went with the old, different clothes trick and couldn't be bothered to do anything else. If you want to watch the same actor playing two different characters on screen in a good movie, I recommend Enemy. Fantastic work by Denis Villeneuve and Jake Gyllenhaal. There's also Alien Covenant, where Michael Fassbender plays two different androids, but I wouldn't call that movie good. A masterpiece when compared to The Flash, but has its own movie, it's lacking. During this time, most of the movie is just both Flashes interacting with each other. The younger version doesn't have his powers yet, so the older version makes sure he gets them, but then he's the one that loses his own powers. There's an entire sequence where the younger version is trying out the powers for the first time, and he accidentally destroys a part of the city. Wait a minute! That Jimmy fucking Lannister. This was another attempt at comedy, and I guess it worked for someone at the theater I was in. I remember hearing someone laugh. Later on, there's another sequence where both Flashes are interacting with the younger Flashes roommates and talking about how this timeline has had movies with different actors and how superheroes like Superman don't exist, or the public isn't aware of them. This sequence wasn't as well received by my theater. This time, no one laughed. I was happy with that. This scene was painful. The movie only gets watchable when we get to Batman. But it's not like it's a massive improvement. The story still sucks. In fact, the very first conversation with Batman is just exposition about time travel. Which is weird, because Batman doesn't have a time machine or time-related superpowers, as far as I know. So it's bizarre that this character is giving off valuable and very specific information just because he's really smart. It's almost like the writers didn't know when they should drop this piece of exposition or which character to use, and they went with Batman because... I'm Batman. Regardless, the scenes with Keaton's Batman were by far the most watchable of the bunch. I think this has something to do with this actor having screen presence and charisma, something that's missing from everyone else in the movie. Both Barrys and Batman travel to Russia to free Supergirl and there's an action sequence. It wasn't bad, but when it comes to Batman sequences, anything that isn't as awesome as the warehouse scene from Batman v Superman, it just looks shit in comparison. Batman v Superman is a terrible movie, but that one sequence is phenomenal, and by comparison, the Batman scenes in this film don't look interesting. There's nothing this movie does that hasn't been done better in other movies. In fact, the only action set piece that sparked any kind of excitement from me was when Supergirl got exposed to the sunlight and helped fight the Russians. That sequence was nice, it reminded me of Man of Steel, a movie I like very much. After Russia, they get back to Batman's mansion and we have more talking scenes, more filler. 
I don't understand how Supergirl has an exact copy of Superman's suit, but the female version, this one has boobs. I thought that suit was something Clark found in a spaceship that had been stuck on ice for thousands of years. Like, it wasn't something that belonged to him. It was from this random ship that was abandoned on Earth back when Kryptonians were looking for worlds to terraform thousands of years ago. But maybe I'm misremembering things. I might need to give Man of Steel another watch. Regardless, Supergirl having her suit ready looks just as dumb as the logos for each member of the Justice League in that email Batman sent Wonder Woman in Batman v Superman. You're just throwing this here because it's going to get fanboys excited. It's part of the brand they love. It doesn't matter if it makes sense in the story or not. It's just something to make gullible people happy. Supergirl talks with younger Flash about the possibility of her helping them stop General Zod. I forgot to mention that this movie decides to reimagine several scenes from Man of Steel. Supergirl doesn't feel like helping humanity, she's pissed off thanks to being held captive ever since she arrived on Earth, but this feeling doesn't last long. She flies towards a meeting between the US Army and General Zod, the same one from Man of Steel, minus Superman and Lois Lane, and she gets visibly upset when Zod kills who I assume is Detective Stabler from SV you and the entire Kryptonian army starts attacking everyone else. Zod and that badass female soldier from Man of Steel hear her reaction and notice her in the sky, but for some reason they let her get away. It's weird. She's the one they are looking for in this timeline. If they saw her in the sky, why didn't they order their ships to follow her? This scene makes no fucking sense, like a lot of things in this movie. Meanwhile, Batman is helping Older Barry get his powers again. This scene was also done in Justice League, the Flashpoint Paradox, but to much better effect. In fact, the whole movie is better, go watch it. Here, they didn't even have the balls to leave Barry burned and scarred, like Anakin after the end of Revenge of the Sith. It's weird how an animated movie designed to cater a younger audience manages to go further when it comes to violence than a live-action movie that's targeted towards adults. Anyway, Supergirl shows up and helps Barry by carrying him towards the sky. This was the moment where I questioned the science behind what's happening. I thought Superman was weak to lightning, and by extension, all Kryptonians should also be weak to lightning. So this moment is... bizarre. Everyone gets ready and they get back to the place where the US Army was meeting with General Zod. For some reason, the Kryptonians are still fighting the US Army? How? How is this battle still going on? This is literally an army of supermen with advanced alien technology, fighting people with machine guns and tanks. How is any human still alive? A few seconds is all it would have taken for this character to finish them all off. And this time, they have a dozen more like her, plus those spaceships firing blue lasers. It makes no sense how from the time Supergirl left until now that this place hasn't become a mass graveyard and the Kryptonians moved on towards their next target. In movie time, it has been almost 10 minutes since Supergirl left this scene. Unless all the scenes in the Batcave take place in Neverland, where time stands still, this doesn't make any goddamn sense. There's no consistency in this movie, it's lazily and sloppily put together. That's why it sucks. And the most superficial and easy to spot aspect where this is apparent are the visual effects. That's why even people who like this movie agree that the effects are terrible. The CGI during this battle and the rest of the third act looks beyond bad. It's a joke. Man of Steel came out 10 years ago and somehow it looks so much better than this. The battle is worthless since Supergirl and Batman keep dying. By the way, the first time Batman dies, it's the dumbest shit ever. Batman fires missiles towards the Kryptonian ship. There's a force field and the ship remains intact. Instead, Batman is the one that gets fucked. And as a last resort, he decides to do a kamikaze attack against the same ship, the one that has a force field around it. This Batman is dumb. Flash 1 and Flash 2 go back in time and save them, repeatedly, until the older Flash realizes what Ben Affleck's Batman was trying to say back in the beginning of the movie. You're not supposed to change time. And also, some events cannot be changed. This was something Keaton's Batman mentioned during his time travel exposition dump. It was around this moment I had a bad feeling in my throat. Younger Flash was starting to look more and more like that purple creature from the beginning. And I really didn't want a cheap twist this late in the game, but that's exactly what this movie went for. The creature shows up again, and the scene is played out like his identity isn't the most obvious thing ever. And the end result is both funny and sad. Like they honestly thought people wouldn't see this coming. And here I am taking a dump on Kylo Ren killing Han Solo in The Force Awakens every time I get an opportunity to. That scene was not as awful as this one.
We get a look at the DC multiverse, where we see glimpses of previous DC characters, even from actors that have died, and actors whose movie was never made in the first place. CGI Superman Nicolas Cage is the best thing ever. All these cameos are worthless, they have literally no connection to anything in this movie. Just like Supergirl's suit, they're just here to make DC fanboys wet. Once this laughable sequence is over, Purple Flash kills Younger Flash and they both disappear. I'm not gonna linger too much on the fact that if Younger Barry is also this version of Purple Flash and he dies here, that means he didn't exist back when Purple Flash pushed Older Barry from the Speed Force back at the beginning of the movie. And if he didn't exist, then this movie shouldn't exist either. Time travel films rarely make sense, and when it comes to this movie in particular, scenes not making sense tend to be the norm. So I guess the movie is, at least, consistently incoherent. Older Flash goes back in time and changes things again, but this time he has an emotional scene with his mother. A scene that, for me, felt more crappy than emotional, and also kind of trashy. It's not filler, but the way the scene looks and sounds, everything about the execution reminds me of terrible Portuguese telenovelas. I felt nothing while watching this except contempt and boredom. Before leaving this timeline, Barry decides to change another thing and make sure his father is caught on that videotape. This causes George Clooney to appear as Batman instead of Ben Affleck. And this is the last attempt at humor by this giant talk shit of a movie. This doesn't just nullify any character development Barry might have had during his epiphany back when he was time traveling to save Supergirl and Batman, it also shits on any sort of fixing the DC Extended Universe by using time travel to introduce the new actors who will be in the next DC Cinematic Universe. I thought this was the movie that was supposed to connect everything together and even fix some of the past mistakes. Instead, they use the final scene to throw in one last useless joke. Because why not? It fits with this movie. They're both useless. I'm giving The Flash a 1 out of 10. It was a massive waste of time and resources that wasn't done with any care or effort to make sure the final product didn't look like shit. And most egregious of all, it wasn't that enjoyable. The only thing I liked was Supergirl. And that's only because the actress that played her looked hot in costume. She wasn't a character, she was just another toy to use and bait people to come see the movie. Her entire role in the story is to have her fight Zod. She has no more depth than that. But she does look good in that costume, I'll give her that. Anyway, don't watch this, it's awful. Watch Spider-Verse instead, much better use of your time and money. See you next time.